bones and joints of the pelvis. Hi, I'm Hayley from Parallel Coaching and in this video we're going to use this little model to understand all the different bony landmarks of the pelvis. Um, this is going to include the bones but also the joints of the pelvis so that you understand this really for your level two and level three anatomy and physiology exam. There are also three mock questions alongside this video so if you're not on our blog already you can click the link it will take you straight there and you will find the three mock questions just scroll down to the bottom of the page. They will help test your knowledge on everything I teach you today so that you know you are then ready for that level two and three anatomy exam. And when I say two and three, it comes up in both of them. So at level two, you'll need to know a rough understanding of the pelvis. At level three, you need to know a lot more detail about the bones involved as well. So let's have a look at the pelvis and what is part, what is actually going on here. So this is the pelvis. Um, as you can see, you've basically got the spine down through the middle. This is the end part of your lumbar spine here. And then you've got your sacral spine, your sacrum, and then you also have your coccyx at the end. Let me show you that. Now that's the spine. That's not actually part of the pelvis, which a lot of people get wrong here. They think this is part of the pelvis. It's not. The pelvis is actually made of three bones. One is the ilium, which you can see here is like that great big kind of butterfly shape. And it comes down to about this sort of part here. Now that's fused with two other bones. So you've got the ilium, which is this kind of butterfly, big wing shape around the edge that gives it the basin shape. Then you also have the pubis at the front here. Now that basically makes up the whole front part of the pelvis. And then you also have the ischium, which makes up the bottom and lower part of the pelvis. So when you're looking at pelvis, you've basically got three bones on one side and three bones on the other side. Now that means you've got ilium, pubis and ischium, ilium, pubis and ischium. This is not part of your pelvis. This is your top of your femur, which is your upper leg. And then that's the joint that we're going to talk about in a moment. And then obviously remember this part is the part of the spine. So it's actually only these sections here and they're joined together by this joint in the middle, which is your pubic synthesis. So we've got this understanding now that it isn't one fixed big bowl that happens at the bottom of our spine. It's actually two halves of fused bones. So you've got three bones that are fused on one side and three bones that are fused on the other. Now that's really important to be aware of. That's the first part you need to know. Now let's have a look at some key bony landmarks. This bit here that you can just see, this knobbly bit on the front. So this is basically someone facing forwards. This bony bit on the front here is your ASIS, your anterior superior iliac spine and that's because this whole bit across here is your iliac spine so it's your ilium and then that's the spine that goes along it and then this is the front top so anterior superior iliac spine now you can feel this on yourself so all you need to do is if you stand up and feel the bony bits on the front of your pelvis that's your ASIS and that's a really nice key landmark point that you might use for measuring points with your clients. For example, if you're doing a circumference measurement of their thigh, you might go halfway between the ASIS and the kneecap. So it gives you a bony landmark to be able to work off. Also, some measurements that you might do in relation to skin fold calipers often use that bony landmark as well. So it's a good one to be aware of. And also, there's quite a few muscle origins that are around there as well. So that's your ASIS. Then if I flip it around, you have your posterior superior iliac spine, which is here. So it makes sense. It's the back of the pelvis. So it's your posterior, so P-S-I-S, -S, posterior superior iliac spine. Now that you can actually feel if you put your thumbs right back towards your sacrum at the back, you can feel those little knobbly bits and that's your P-S-I-S. Again, it's another key point for muscle attachments that you're going to need to kind of know about, especially at level three. So there's some key parts. You'll also have some muscles that will attach on the inside of the ilium or on the outside of the ilium, depending on whether we're talking about, say, a hip flexor, like a, uh, the iliacus on the front. Or you've even got things like your gluteus medius, gluteus maximus that will have an origin or an insertion point around the outside of the ilium. So you've kind of got this clarity of the pelvis itself. So they're the bones and the bony landmarks. Let's have a look at some of these joints. First one I want to show you is at the back here. And you'll hear, you probably have heard this joint before. This is your sacroiliac joint or sacroiliac joint. And it's basically a cartilaginous joint between the sacrum, which remember is the final, one of the final points of the spine. It's the fused part of the bottom. Um, and then we've got the little coccyx at the very end. 
but that's your sacrum and the ilium joins alongside that next to alongside some cartilage basically so it's attached with some cartilage there is a little tiny synovial capsule at the very bottom of that now you might have heard about sacroiliac joint because some people get pain in there that can be a problem with the cartilage it could be because the pelvic bones are slightly out of alignment um it could also be because of wear and tear it could be that they've strained a, a nerve a spinal nerve that runs from that so there's actual little spinal nerves that come out of each of these little holes in your sacrum and that can sometimes cause abrasion and friction around the sacroiliac joint particularly with things like running or poor posture or lifting poorly that can occur um, then we also have other joints you need to be aware of you've got a big ball and socket joint here which it happens in the acetabulum the acetabulum is the name of the socket in the pelvis and that you can see is kind of sitting if you think your ilium stops just above that joint it's sitting halfway between what makes up the pubis and what makes up the ischium so inside that is your acetabulum it's like a little socket and then the ball of your femur and that femur remember is the top of your upper uh, of your upper thigh um sticks into there and it works to allow for a huge amount of range of movement the idea here is that it's got great mobility but it's a deep enough socket that it can really be stable so that's the idea with the acetabulum so you've kind of got these two key uh, joints you'll also potentially hear of the pubic synthesis at the front whereby the two pubic bones are fixed in together this is via a cartilaginous join here so it does have a tiny bit of give but it's not really designed to move um, so <laughs> that's the idea of all of the joints and all of the main things you need to know about the pelvis like I say, this will help prepare you for your level two and level three anatomy and physiology exam. So if you want more help like that about the bony landmarks and also any part of your anatomy and physiology exam, make sure you check out the link that is alongside this video and that will take you to your revision boot camps. These revision boot camps are designed to help you pass those exams with confidence first time or next time that you go to take that exam. We've mapped it to the syllabus and we've done it in nice, easy to follow videos like this. So that it's not jargony, but you can actually understand it. So go and check that out if you're getting stuck in your revision. Also, remember to check out those mock questions that I said about at the beginning. And if you haven't already subscribed to the YouTube channel, make sure you do so that you get a notification next time I post another video like this on. Now, that's me for today. Make sure you drop a little comment underneath the video with your big takeaway, and I will see you next time where we'll explore more stuff about the anatomy and more things in preparation for your level two and level three anatomy and physiology exams. Take care.